and welcome back to the Thinking Progressive podcast. I'm your host, Ron Rivers, and in this episode, we're going to be talking about a necessary step for transcendence. The title of this talk is called Let It Go Millennial and Gen Z Too. The theme we're going to be discussing, one that I thought was especially appropriate for the start of a new year, is the concept of letting go. Letting go can be defined in a number of ways, depending on who you are and what experiences you've encountered throughout your journey. All of us, no matter who we are or when we were born or where we were born, have inherited frameworks for how we experience the world. These frameworks can be political, they can be technological, economic, or spiritual. For the majority of us, portions of our lives have been about learning how to navigate structures that were here well before we came into being and will likely remain well after us. But these inherited ways of thinking and being are actively detrimental towards our transcendence. We cannot be more than we are if we cling to what we know and are comfortable with. But letting go is hard. Right? Sometimes we don't even know that we're holding on. In this episode, we're going to dive into why the systems we've inherited are so pervasive to our ways of thinking and acting today, ending with a call to embrace the abandonment of ways of being that prevent us from realizing our true power. Thank you for listening to the Thinking Progressive Podcast. Today, our world exists in a state of global unrest. Perpetual wars, wealth inequality enabled by political corruption, and the climate crisis on the horizon makes it hard to imagine how we change our direction. Lately, the concept that things could always be worse feels more like a prophecy than it does a reminder to appreciate the good. And it's almost as if the universe is playing some sort of cruel joke on us. The pace of our technological advancements is quickly catapulting us into an era where scarcity as, as we understand it can be ended. But instead of coming together in a global revolution of consciousness, spirit, and in political action to accelerate these advancements, we're becoming more divided. Why is that? Why can't the generations leading the global order draw the same conclusions that many in our generation already have? That a worldwide structure based on resource competition is an inadequate system for shared prosperity. We know this because despite the progress it's helped create, we're still on the verge of a global climate crisis, one that will ruin economies, reshape our food supplies, and probably lead to mass migration and more war. The millennial and Gen Z generations couldn't participate in driving planetary decisions up until this point which is why it's so easy to get angry at the boomer generation. But there's a more significant theme at play here that we should be thinking about because we're not immune to its impact. If you share the growing desire for a transformative future, then we need to be more aware of these pitfalls and how to avoid them ourselves. Our everyday interactions with each other subconsciously reinforce a way of thinking and acting. Every moment we share with another person, digitally or you know, in person, is an exchange. We're always giving and receiving, both consciously and subconsciously. Now, all of these exchanges happen within frameworks. Frameworks dictate what are and are not acceptable actions in our transactions. So one example might be the laws defining property and contract in the United States, which is the primary definer of wealth. Others might be the laws dictating how we fund education or healthcare. Every human that has ever lived has been a slave to the frameworks of the time and space that they occupy. There is no escaping it. Our very being represents an evolution of thought within our species. Every generation becoming a more expansive form of humanity than the ones before it. Every framework that exists today and every one that we may invent in the future will always reinforce a particular way of living upon us. Each of them contains the ideals and vision of a specific people dealing with certain problems in a very limited moment of time. 
The problem today is that the frameworks themselves are the source of our struggle. They perpetuate the system that is driving us to ruin. Statistically speaking, boomers extract the most benefit from this system. Millennials and Gen Z suffer from it, despite having no voice in its creation or its continuation. And here's where we identify the primary conflict in our struggle and the central theme of, of this argument. Today, we're experiencing the greatest generational conflict ever in the history of humanity. And these divisions are a direct result of the exponential growth of technology and how it has impacted the millennial and Gen Z generations in comparison to those before us. With the crisis drawing closer every day, we have to ask ourselves, how do we break free from the frameworks that dominate our experience? The answer is to let go. The ultimate truth of the universe is that change changes. No institution is sacred. No way of being deserves to live after its usefulness has ended. All of our social systems are the inventions of time and culture whose values and interests do not represent our generations. That's why the millennial and Gen Z generations must adopt a new way of thinking about change moving forward. And that begins with recognizing that we need to reimagine the organization of our national and global order. Letting go is the acceptance that before we can be better, we have to ditch the bad. Imagine it like another way. All of our laws and institutions are vehicles. They are tools to reach our desired destinations. Every single policy put forth, tax increase or cut, and other investments are methods of moving our vehicle in a specific direction. There is no neutral action. Every choice is a step towards a broader vision. Anyone who's ever owned a cheap starter car as a teenager knows that after a certain point in time, you stop fixing the vehicle and you just buy a new one. That's because you reach a point of diminishing returns trying to fix a dying car. Investing more in the car isn't producing better results, it's just delaying the inevitable replacement. Beyond politics is a deeper, more spiritual aspect to our struggle. We want to be freer to live a life where our present options aren't limited by past structures. Freedom demands that we can transcend our circumstances. We need the ability to change the direction of our lives without structural resistance. Exploring how we do this begins with understanding how our current moment limits us from becoming who we are. So what's holding us back? Right, today we live in a society where our personal security is tied directly to our particular profession. We want to become more and expand ourselves by pursuing passions, ideas, and creativity but are forced to conform to a form of work that diminishes us. We imagine a world where the individual's life chances are not determined by birth lottery. We're speaking globally too, not just here in the United States. The frameworks that dictate our interpersonal exchanges deny us the equality of respect and opportunity that every human being has a right to. Today, the cultures and institutions of the past support a survivalist mentality hammered into us throughout our evolutionary history. Millennials and Gen Z understand that every human being is just a different extension of ourselves, a sacred infinity made flesh. Struggling with the present is a conflict between our understanding of who we are and the limitations that our frameworks put onto who we can become. It depresses us, it makes us anxious and fearful, and ultimately for some it turns us to believe in false idols who promise salvation but only bring ruin and misery. One of our biggest problems is that we don't understand how to go from here to where we want to be. Even worse, we don't know where we want to be. Here I can really only offer encouragement. Don't let our lack of direction stress you out. This is the ordinary course of all of human history. Almost all of our leaps in consciousness and culture came after periods of darkness. 
The good news is, is that today it is within our power to make these leaps without crisis. Millennials and Gen Z are children of the internet. Generations of people who felt the impact of our technological ascendancy much more than any other living age today. We understand how the connectivity provided by the internet impacts childhood experiences and perceptions, something that the boomer and Gen X generations can never share as a lived experience. Technology has shown us the power of connectivity and collaboration. It's also provided us with a form of expression that ignored the corporate propaganda fed to our parents through mainstream media channels. Most importantly, it's allowed us to develop a philosophy of life beyond what we were taught, a worldview that understands that our real power is in collaboration, not competition. Still, we aren't free from the burdens our frameworks have placed upon us. The way we think about ourselves, about others, and the world is the sum of our cumulative experiences that we have been a part of. Well before we could judge for ourselves, we were filled with information about the way things are, deeply imprinting worldviews that we now struggle to resist. Many within the millennial and Gen Z generations have already fallen prey to the dogmatic worship of a particular way of life and being. Old conflicts that were manufactured to divide an aging population bleeding their way into our existence. Now, this idea isn't an attack on any one subgroup or belief. It's a continuation of the progression of all of humanity. Our parents were subject to the same type of indoctrination, as were their parents before them. The primary difference today is that there's enough knowledge and connective power for us to come together and understand that the frameworks are the problem. If we do not let go of those first, we have no hope of creating something better. Now, it should be noted that millennials and Gen Z aren't some homogenous groups. Some of us are benefiting very much from the current arrangements, and we may be tempted to defend them. The idea that I have mine, and that's all that matters, or that my work ethic is the primary determining factor in my success is short-sighted and narrow-minded. It also ignores the reality of the crisis on our doorstep. At the heart of imagining something new is letting go of the old ideas surrounding innovation and advancement within society. It's no exaggeration to say that technology brings us closer to realizing an entirely new way of being every day. It benefits all humanity to accelerate the pace of progress and innovation. Technology companies today benefit from laws defining property and contracts that were created during a time where our current pace of change was unimaginable. The result is that the vast majority of potential innovators do not have access to our most advanced technologies to build upon. Instead, a handful of monopolies control them. Now, you don't have to be an economist to understand how dramatically the American economy has changed over the past two decades. Innovation and creative works are the most significant sources of revenue generation and social advancement. Knowing that these trends are real, it makes sense to argue for encouraging and empowering our creative thinkers and doers. Today, a handful of companies have the ability and capital to consistently innovate and protect those innovations from others, even if they have no intention to use them. In the book, The Knowledge Economy, Roberto Mangiabera Unger explains how we cannot create an innovation economy without freeing up technological access. Almost every industry has a few really advanced companies that have the resources to continually create and innovate. The rest are stuck working on problems that may already be solved. Opening up access to the most advanced technologies isn't a new idea. During the Industrial Revolution, anyone with the means to invest in production was given access to the most sophisticated machinery and techniques. What millennials and Gen Z have to let go of is the idea that inventions or discoveries belong to any one person. We replace this concept with the new understanding that technology is a collective means of progress. No one person or company has a right to limit others from exploring or expanding upon it. The alternative is just wasting the time and potential of our people so that a small minority can profit more. 
Technology is and always has been the driving factor in the evolution of human consciousness. In an era of unparalleled growth, it is the most logical course of action to radically rethink how we distribute access to our most advanced forms of production. Let go of the idea that any one person or group has a right to determine the destiny of our technological future. We can still reward excellence while agreeing that individual wealth and power do not take priority over our collective well-being. Moving on to politics. All political struggle is a struggle of spirit. Politics is the way that we structure the frameworks and laws that govern our daily activity and, and really more importantly, our ways of interacting with each other. It's the basis for all of our interactions at all levels, and today it happens to be one of the most dysfunctional systems in our society. We must let go of the idea that the United States Constitution, a 244-year-old document, is some sort of divine mandate by which we should guide our actions. We should recognize it for what it is, a brilliant social technology that needs a complete rework. We take what we know now to be the best aspects, eliminate the negatives, and create new frameworks to further expand our humanity and universal rights. The consciousness of people in 1776 was radically different than ours today. Worshiping any creation of the past as a final destination is incredibly short-sighted and a willing limitation of our collective power to be more than we presently are. Founder Thomas Jefferson understood this and supported the revising of the document every 19 years. Millennials and Gen Z must let go of the idea that we have the luxury of ignoring politics. If you were raised in a blue collar family, you probably grew up hearing how all politicians are corrupt and that no one knows what they're doing. And while that statement contains truth, it is a subconscious avoidance of the responsibility we bear to become involved in governance at the local, state, and national levels. We also have to let go of the idea that political donations from some sources, for example, like unions, is better than others, like corporations. All organizational money in politics corrupts the process. The Citizens United ruling opened up a Pandora's box for the funding of our elections, and the only thing that can stop it now is a constitutional amendment. If our generations take a hard stand on not voting for any candidate accepting corporate or special interest money, we would radically change the political landscape in the United States in a decade. We will never achieve publicly funded elections, publicly owned campaign platforms, and an end of corporate control when we continue to elect purchase representatives. Now keep in mind, neutrality is a false ideal. There is no such thing as a neutral action in this universe. Every choice, even the decision to do nothing, moves us towards a specific direction. The choice to not participate in our democracy is a choice to support the existing oligarchy rule. Let go of the idea that we have no alternative options. We do if we're willing to act. Now, letting go of our apathy isn't a big ask. You don't have to run for office or even be involved. You do have to know your candidate options in every race. Vote and encourage others to vote for change-making candidates. Ignore race, religion, gender, and age. Focus on the issues. Today, both political parties rely on the majority of us just voting for their team without understanding what they really represent. Both place the interests of wealthy donors ahead of the well-being of the people they serve. Our ignorance allows ill-intentioned actors to reign for too long. Let go of the illusion that things are going to be okay, or that somehow we're isolated from the impending fallout that lays ahead. The price of a healthy society is participation. The reward is the opportunity to define our experiences. If we refuse to let go of old habits, we choose to hold on to oppressive rule. Economics is right in line with politics, right? We have to let go of the economic narratives that we were taught growing up. The future might have been about getting a secure job at that community mine, energy plant, or manufacturing facility. Or it may have been about finding a career, building a business, and focusing on wealth. Whatever it was, understand that it's unlikely to be relevant over the next decade. 
millennials and our parents bore the brunt of the economic collapse of the 2000s. After following the pathways preached since primary schooling, we found ourselves awash in student debt with no opportunities. Our mothers and fathers lost employment and found themselves without many options in their mid-50s. You know, in a government of elected representation, we would expect policies to uplift the average person during this period of strife. Over the past 20 years, we bailed out multinational banks, we spent almost $5 trillion on wars that we entered under false pretenses, and we slashed tax rates for corporations and the wealthy. Let go of the idea that the majority of our present day political leadership cares about the average American. They don't. We also need to let go of the measurements we're given to define economic success. According to Gallup, only 55% of Americans report owning stocks in April 2019. Stock market performance is an inadequate measure of prosperity. The same could be said for gross domestic product, GDP. And this isn't even a unique idea. New Zealand has already shifted its national success measurements to a more broad well-being agenda. Economic activity has always been a priority for capital holders. Today, our economic frameworks are why we live in a boom-bust economy, why economic inequality is at the worst it's been since the 1920s Gilded Age, and why we allow fossil fuel companies to actively spread disinformation about the climate crisis. Let go of the idea that it's all capitalism's fault. Our problem is not capitalism. It is the dogmatic worship of our singular form of capitalism. If we are unwilling to create separate types of markets for different industry verticals, we will never realize economic justice. That means democratically choosing to socialize specific industries while keeping others private. To the growing progressive movement, let go of the idea that replacing one ism with another ism is going to solve our problems. Now is not the time to look to history for a solution. Today, we have the opportunity to radically reimagine our systems of exchange, utilizing technology to genuinely democratize our market economy and create scaled efficiencies beyond anything previously imagined. Now we'll move on to what may be the most controversial topic we've ever discussed in the podcast, spirituality and religion. Millennials and Gen Z must let go of the notion that our spirituality has anything to do with organized religion. Spirituality is the quest for understanding and connection with our higher selves. Religion is the organization of spirituality into political, economic, and military engines. Spirituality has helped us redefine ourselves since the nomadic era of our species. Religion has been the source of countless terrors, both in past and present times. All language is a form of soul craft, right? Humans are, are context-driven beings. Our evolutionary success is predicated on our ability to control and understand spoken words. Letting go of the power of religion over our spirituality may require us to redefine or abandon aspects of our vocabulary. Let's take the word soul as an example. For many worshipers today, the word soul ties us to a being of dramatic power, like a god, right? Just something well beyond us. It's a form of judgment, one that has consequences well beyond our brief time in this form. One that was used to guide an ancient people who existed in a universe of consciousness utterly foreign to modern day. Today, we might define the soul as the central point in our universe, the defining characteristic that makes all of us the center of everything, all experience extending outward from our personal perspectives. We know that our consciousness can be shaped, can be molded and directed by the inputs that we receive. So why not take an active approach to developing it? Religion can be a very personal subject, but we have to let go of the idea that criticism, questions, and curiosity of existing orders of spirituality is in any way unacceptable. All religions are systems of being, a documented way of life that, if you mimic, promises eternal peace. Millennials and Gen Z must let go of the idea 
that spiritual peace is reserved for an experience after death. Transcendence is an active process tied directly to the structure of the institutions that we surround ourselves with. Now this leads our generations to a more profound question. If we require deities to guide us, can those gods evolve? Are we strong enough to recognize that for many of us, our religious beliefs were inherited and indoctrinated? This concept is a lot less far-fetched than it may seem on the surface. No organized religion is eternal. All of them were created. We went from worshiping nature to worshiping the sun kings to worshiping many gods and one god and several other alternatives. Are we bold enough to recognize that another revision may be in order? You know, one of my biggest qualms with the two most popular monotheistic religions is the separation of divinity from man. Uh, and we'll use Christianity as the most popular religion in the world, so we'll use Christ's ascension into heaven as an example. You know, in many ways, Christ ascending to heaven is a removal of our true power. Almost any devout Christian will tell you that man can never have pure grace, but we have to work towards it anyway. But if you contrast those ideals to Hinduism or Taoism, where the idea of divinity is within every human being, we are it, different manifestations of the whole universe, each occupying a unique point in time and space. Um, I can also you know, frame it in a more scientific perspective. All of us are just a continuation of the same Big Bang, extending further outward, but all originating from the same point. We were one and we are one. Today requires us to embrace the now, to recognize that the ultimate reality is now and forever will be this moment. Connecting our spiritual fulfillment with the way we structure social frameworks will be a significant leap towards transcendence. Similar to the argument for letting go of political history, our desire to be more isn't a diminishment of what was, it's a method of becoming what we will be. Democracy is a spiritual philosophy masked as a political arrangement. It has nothing to do with the Republican or Democratic parties. It has everything to do with our ability to have a voice in the direction of our individual and shared destinies. That is spiritual freedom. Dr. Cornell West best summarizes the argument for letting go in his lectures when he talks about how learning how to love is akin to learning how to die. We cannot become more than we are if we are unwilling to let go of what we have been. Deep inside of many of us, there's this gnawing desire to transcend, to free ourselves from the artificial constraints imposed on our existence by society. For much of our past, it was just not an option, but today it is in our grasp. Our generations, like few generations before us, have decisions to make now that will determine the future of humanity. We must embrace physical, spiritual, and psychic death as part of our rebirth into something more. Recognizing the latent power within us, we can change the course of our destiny, wrestling it from the hands of the generations before us, understanding that every step forward requires leaving something behind.